Our reading from Hebrew Scripture this morning comes to us from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verses 1 through 7. But now thus says the Lord, He who created you, O Jacob, He who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overwhelm you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as your ransom and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Our epistle lesson comes to us from the Acts of the Apostles, the 8th chapter, verses 14 through 17. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as of yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them, they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. And our gospel lesson text for the message today comes to us from Luke's gospel, the third chapter, verses 15 through 17 and verses 21 through 22. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Thus ends the reading of our scripture. May God add a blessing to our hearing of it. A little program change, a little note for you here. We're going to be the special music this morning. You may remain seated. We'll crack open our hymnals to hymn number 245. We have come at Christ's own bidding.
author, lecturer, Episcopalian priest, Barbara Brown Taylor, told the story of her grandmother, Lucy. And she would talk about how wonderful visits were to Lucy's house when she was growing up. All of her granddaughters had received this kind of treatment. Lucy was sort of a different looking sort, Barbara Brown Taylor recalls. She was diabetic, and instead of where lower limbs would be, she had wooden stumps. Because of the diabetes, her eyes were bad, and she had to wear dark glasses, making her look a little bit like a bombardier pilot. But she said, each visit to Grandma Lucy's house was an experience in the extravagance of grace. First, there was the closet full of presents to be opened on every day of the visit. And then there were the special meals, each of them having a dessert afterwards, and the shopping. There would be shopping trips to pick up dresses and crinolines and hair ribbons. But the best part of the experience for her was at the end of the day, when it came time for the bath. Grandma Lucy would draw a bath for Barbara Brown Taylor, would take a huge sponge and, and soap up and polish Barbara Brown Taylor's skin. After the bath was done, she would anoint her with Jergens lotion from head to the soles of the feet. And then afterwards, there was this pale blue puff powder thing, and she'd put Evening of Paris all over her, and that was the crowning glory of the experience. Barbara Brown Taylor remembered that she never doubted that she was loved when she visited Lucy's house. And she said nothing ever since then shook her of the notion that she was loved and that she was treasured. I think there are probably two great emotional, spiritual needs that lie within every person. One is the knowledge to know that we are free. But the other, and I think the most important, is to know that we are loved. And I don't think that was lost on Jesus either. Even Jesus. God made at least two efforts to tell Jesus that he was beloved and special. One was referred to in the last hymn we sang, the Transfiguration. Those of you that know the story know that when Jesus was on the mountaintop, he was transfigured in the presence of Moses and Elijah. And while a cloud overshadowed the place, the voice spoke from heaven. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. And of course, at baptism, when Jesus was baptized by John at the River Jordan, after Luke says after the baptism was done, Jesus was praying, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form as a dove, and he heard the affirmation, This is my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Now you wonder, Christians have wondered this over the years, why was it that Jesus received baptism? If John's baptism was, in fact, for the forgiveness of sins, and we hold Jesus to be a just and blameless individual, why was Jesus baptized by John in the River Jordan? When people ask that question, I come up with two responses. One is that uh, Jesus was showing his solidarity with God's work as it was expressed through John. The call to forgiveness for people to return and come back Jesus was, in essence, saying symbolically, I am on board with this, I am ahead of this, you know, I am with this. But perhaps more importantly, Jesus gives us the pathway in being baptized to show us how to be faithful to God and how to walk in his footsteps. And baptism, as I mentioned with the small folks earlier, gives us a name. Now, we get first and middle names at baptism, but we also receive the name of Christian. To become a little Christ. That's who we become in baptism. And baptism is for everybody. 
Not just the people that are good and make good decisions most of the times, but for everybody. Gary Carver once said that baptism is for those people who wandered away from the path they once knew as children, keep tracking into trouble all of the time. These are people that don't accidentally but consciously keep running away from God. They're the greedy ones who know that there's only one source of salvation. And so baptism becomes that path for all of us. And when we do that, we walk into Jesus' footsteps. We become little Christs. About 30 years back, I had the chance to go to an installation service for a colleague in the area. Service was being officiated by our association minister at the time, the Reverend Don Hinsey. And not only was he part of the liturgy, but he was also preaching. And he mentioned in the sermon that there is the mistaken belief that the call to ministry begins at ordination. He said, not so. The call to ministry begins at baptism. Now some of us take on specialized ministry. Some of us become commissioned, licensed, ordained. But the vast majority of us don't go into those kinds of specialized ministries. All of us are called to follow in Jesus' footsteps to be ministers to other people. Sometimes that ministry takes place within these four walls. Sometimes it extends beyond the four walls. But all of us are called to be part of that ministry. Fred Craddock, who, homiletician, preacher, got a couple of his books on the shelf in my office, talked about a time when he was living in southwestern Oklahoma. Small town, about 450 people. It had maybe four Christian churches. And as things were back in those days, sometimes, you know, X number of people would show up, a little less on some weeks, a little more on others. That accounted for most of the town, four small churches. That's where most of them gathered on Sunday mornings. But there was another place of gathering on that Sunday morning. It was a small diner. And a lot of the people who weren't part of those four congregations gathered at the diner. And one day, Fred Craddock wandered over to the diner, and he found one of the old regulars, a gentleman by the name of Frank, about 77 years old. Fred Craddock introduced himself, and Frank's response was, Sorry, preacher, not looking for a church. I love my family, I work hard, and that's what I consider life to be, and everything else on top of it is fluff. And that's how they parted. Much to Fred Craddock's surprise, Frank eventually showed up at his church. And as things go in small towns, tongues began to wag. Well, Frank must be sick. There must be something going on with him. Why did Frank darken the doorpost of a church? And eventually, within the next year, Frank became baptized, lo and behold. And Frank and Fred established a friendship. You know, they talked every once in a while, but still, uh, the question sort of tumbled in Fred Craddock's mind. You know, why? What happened? And so one day, he sort of kind of moved up to the edge of that conversation. He said, uh, Frank, do you remember when you were baptized? Yeah. Well, I assume you still love your family and that you still work hard. Uh, can I ask why? And Frank said, I used to think that life consisted only of loving my family, and working hard. But then I discovered something else. I have a responsibility to serve other people, too. He heard that summons in baptism. 
Friends, baptism is that moment where we are bathed in the grace of God. We understand, as Barbara Brown Taylor did with her grandmother, that we are loved more than we can realize, that we are affirmed, mentioned by name, and called to a course of ministry. Baptism, as I said before, is not only for those people that make the right decisions most of the time, but it's for everybody. And especially for people that wander and miss the mark and for people that turn their back intentionally, it is for them too. And once we are baptized, we have a chance to walk where Jesus walked and to serve the people that Jesus served. It is a call and a summons to be little Christ's. On this day in the church calendar, it is my hope and prayer that we will ponder and consider our baptism as we remember the baptism of Jesus and how we are called to follow in his way. Amen. Let us turn now to hymn number 241, When Jesus Came to Jordan. understand the great and unfathomable love that God 